What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War Ladder Cast. Rain is who we're going to be looking at today. He is doing very well in this season of SSL. I'm trying not to give any spoilers, but he has a Terran opponent coming up in uh, in the SSL, and I wanted to take a look at some of his more recent ladder games versus Terran to just see what his level is like. Never really know what to expect from Rain, aside from some really big brain plays. Sometimes he's right on top of it. Sometimes he is at the absolute pinnacle of Protoss. Uh, and other times he seems to kind of fall flat. Like he hasn't been practicing or he hasn't been trying as hard recently. So we're gonna get a good look at what he's uh, shaping up to be. Uh, going into this next round and his opponent speed is a good person to give us that benchmark speed is number two on the ladder he has been up and coming recently he's super super strong uh, the person only person above him number one on the ladder is flash so it's kind of funny that we've got flash and 10 minute flash holding the top two positions on the ladder but he is definitely going to give Rain a run for his money. He's going to put on a lot of pressure. He's going to run vultures around absolutely everywhere. Uh, try to get in, try to poke in wherever he can. So we'll get a good look at what Rain's defense is looking like. How strong he's looking uh, with his macro play as well. If he can keep up with speed, then he can keep up with pretty much everyone or anyone that he has to face. So uh, let's see what kind of build he wants to open with. He's got the Zealot popping out here on Minstrel. Minstrel, a very strange map. Uh, even for TVP, it is kind of weird. You've got this quite a small distance pushing position coming through the middle. If you want to do something like a six fact, it's pretty quick to get over to the Protoss Natural but there are a lot of different pathways that can lead to a flank. You can come around the back and get into the back, or you can come around the top here and get into the back of the push, or you can come around the bottom and get right over here towards the natural. And beyond that, there's even more pathways that go around the top of the map and the bottom of the map. So it is a map that I predicted would be extremely strong for counter-attack style of gameplay and I think that's played out pretty uh, th that's proven to be pretty true wow speed is gonna go for a two fact I I don't know this it's inexplicable to me how this has come back into fashion recently I'm really blown away by how many people are doing two fact it seemed like it might have just been a dominator meta because i saw it a lot on dominator recently oh geez that one cell it's gonna run right past and well that's gonna uh, give up the entirety of the strategy here for speed yeah it seems like he wants to pull it i thought it was just a dominator thing it seems like it's it's a meta thing i'm not really too sure about this because it's kind of understood at this point that Two fact is just not a good build. Protoss has so many tools that they can use to to stop it as long as they just build three gateways and they get a singularity charge, they should be able to easily, easily hold this off. And as you can see, after spotting that triple gateway and goons just being pumped out, that's really all you need. You just need goons. Goon is a very, very strong unit. You really don't need anything more than that. Like, eight goons will destroy whatever can come out of these two factories. Does not matter. Speed vultures, if you're pumping marines as well, you've got tanks, you've got siege, you've got mines, whatever it is. All is countered by just more goons, as long as you've got more. Oh, and a shield battery is very nice as well. I mean... It's almost overkill, actually, to have the shield battery, but better to be safe than sorry. It's not a very expensive building, anyway. And he'll be 
cutting probes right now. He's barely mining gas, as you can see, 400 gas in the bank. He's pulled most of his probes off of those gas geysers. He will start to produce some probes once he gets all three gateways pumping, right? That is the priority. All of three of these gateways should be non-stop making units. Well, that's a little bit funny. There we go. Gets them all going again. Having the three goons in production is the most important thing at this moment. And we're going to see, fl uh, not flash, speed, 10 minute flash, push in towards this natural. He sees the number of goons and he's like, ooh, I got to get out of here. Whoa, run by. That was a sneaky run by there. Baiting out with the Marines, those goons into the front, but slipping the vulture in the back. How many probes can he get here? One, two. He'll get a third. If he got two vultures in here, he could have gotten like eight probes, I imagine. Uh, he would have gotten a lot because the mines, right? These mines are going to be blocking. Coming forward once again, he's going to lay down some mines right in front of these dragoons. There's no observer, but we don't need to push forward. We do need to push up into the base, though. In order to stop this, looks like the vulture finally went down. The mine did connect here, though. Some dragoons going up to the north. I don't know if this is a good idea. If we just set up mines on the top side and creep forward with these tanks on the bottom side, how is he going to be able to run through these mines? This force is kind of cut off. It's not really going to be able to help too much. More vultures are coming. He's setting up mines to prevent a uh, this this goon force from cutting off his reinforcements, which is awesome. But they're actually just sitting here waiting. He's even worried about maybe a counterattack. Setting up a bunch of mines back at home. Good preemptive play from speed, but it's not anything like that. It's just going to be zealots walking out into the minefield to just sandbag some of these mines, get rid of them. So that he can push out with the dragoons. There we go. He gets rid of the majority of the mines and he brings his dragoons back together. So he's got this frontal force ready to contest. A few more zealots should pop out here pretty soon. He actually hasn't. Oh, he's added more gateways. Look at that. Well, one more gateway here, making four goons at a time. We have a CC on the way for speed. He's going to try to maneuver this into a normal game, but generally the two fact is an all in. If you don't do critical damage with this attack, you're probably just going to lose. Running in with the goon, he's going to try and bait the mines. Let's get one mine to go off. A second mine should follow. There we go. He gets the two mines to connect. And now there's only one good left. Oh, vultures make their way up into the main, though. Great pylon block. Really good pylon block there. It's going to prevent any more damage. A few probes went down. But speed gets shut out pretty quickly from that main base. Excellent, excellently done there by Rain. You can see his defense is on point. Now, it's not like you you have to have godlike defense to beat a two factory when you've scouted it, especially, right, Rain? Um, the problem with the two fact is that even if it's unscouted, it's really not that difficult to hold anymore. Uh, the, the level of the Protoss players has just increased. Their Dragoon control is so good now. There's really not a lot of fear of two-fact anymore. Uh, it's it's still It still can be scary. You can still lose games to it, but you have to be doing a lot of things. <laughs> you have to be doing a lot of things that are, uh, you know, wrong or uh, getting countered by the two-fact, right? Like, let's say you went for one gate, no range into Robo then you probably will die <laughs> but still it's it's still possible to hold because if you get a reaver out you can build a couple of zealots and start like fighting with the zealots and reavers uh and just building pylon wall if you just keep building walls in the front so that the uh, vultures can't get through and then you start dropping reavers and zealots on top of everything you can still hold it so i mean there's there's just not a lot of credit to two-factor two anymore. There's not a lot of reason to do it anymore. Uh, so I'm surprised that we saw Speed pull it out. He's still going to be able to play. It's a playable state. This game right now, 39 to 38. A third base is on the way. It is a little bit late, but everything's been slowed down because of that two-fact on both sides. 
six factory follow-up from speed meanwhile he's gonna come up to this third base and try to deal some damage sieging outside of range of the nexus but in range of this one goon picks that off really quickly and it's gonna start to hit some of these pylons if he had been hitting the if he had gotten just in range of the nexus i feel like this would be a lot scarier is he actually gonna be able to hit it no yeah if he was already hitting this really hard then it would be quite difficult to deal with but he's gonna move one tank into range and i think he just easily saves this bringing up the observer where is the observer Oh, where, where is that observer? Okay, we don't have it. We're just going to drop zealots on top of these mines to try and bait them in. Oh, great shot there with the tanks. Dealing a lot of damage, killing off three dragons so far. But the tanks are going to go down eventually. This Protoss force is a little bit too big. Vultures are going to try to run by here, put down some mines, try to get some kills on these probes. Two or three probes will fall, but that was four tanks. Four tanks traded for a bit of damage on the Nexus. I think a pylon went down and a few goons. I think we're going to be pretty happy with that overall from Rain. And this six factory push that's going to come out is not going to be nearly as strong. He actually needs a third add-on, I think. 600 gas in the bank. Might as well go for an extra add-on. Start pumping triple tank. Uh, as at least as long as you can afford it. Ooh, run by here into the natural once again. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier about rain getting tested. Ooh, nice, nice mine explosion there. It's like these vultures get cleaned up. This vulture has three kills, doing quite a bit of damage. Rain is falling a little bit short in his defense. Constantly losing probes and allowing vultures to run in is not how you win games against these modern Terran players. Like Sharp, like Rush, like Speed. These guys are going to test you. And just like this, we don't have another pylon wall. We're missing the pylon wall over at this base. He's going to try to set it up now, but once again, getting on top of these units. Laying down some mines and getting a lot of probes. Look, he's actually ahead in worker count now. The tanks are running backwards, but... Siege line has been set up. Is he going to be able to dive in on this and kill some of these tanks? Rain, get a bit of a risk here. Just diving in. Kind of impromptu attack there. He loses. He kills two. Oh my gosh. GG. That's it. He gives up. Rain is out. Taking too much damage. He's been frustrated too much. And losing all those goons was the final straw. I really expected him to try and play that one out. But... He just felt like he was too far behind at this point. Kind of crazy that Speed managed to win this with just a two-factory two play into six-fact. I didn't even think it was really possible. This The two-fact hardly did any damage. Just it managed to slip in a couple of vultures here and there. Killed a few probes. He lost all the tanks. He lost all the tanks up here as well. It felt like a really playable position for Rain. I'm not sure why he wanted to tap out so early, but I really do feel his frustration with the myriad times that Vultures managed to slip into his base. Gotta be annoying and frustrating to deal with. We didn't have plus two. We only just... Oh, I guess it's about halfway done. Plus one armor for speed so there were missing there were things missing from his game he doesn't have anything defending this base down here at all by the way nothing defending the third base the fourth base or the third base was up here for rain really a, an oversight for rain not building a pylon wall here there's no reason not to do that um you've got plenty of minerals and there's just it's so likely that speed is going to be able to run by you at some point. He's going to be able to get past your units with his vultures. That's what he does. And this map is crazy. Right? We had the army up here. And we probably had an army down over here for uh, rain. So, so easy to run through this direction. And go ahead and harass this probe line. And without the pylon wall, you just can't stop it. It was also missing pylons at this natural, by the way. There's a pylon here and a pylon here, and some vultures managed to get by there. There's no reason not to 
close that up a little bit more make it just like one dragoon a uh, hole big for uh, things to filter through uh, but he failed to do that and this was a very recent game by the way guys this was played on october the 10th of 2024 so this is a good indicator of where rain's uh, vulnerabilities may lie now i've got some more games here to go through i've got like six games of rain uh, remaining they're not versus speed though so let's jump into those and see what his overall condition is looking like in this most recent month well that was a good game my thirst for brood war has not yet been sated and so we're gonna hop into this series with ride sky down here in the bottom right hand corner i'm not sure exactly where he's at in terms of the latter evelyn ks oh wow this is um quite a low ranked account in comparison definitely not near the top of the ladder but somehow managed to match with rain one of the greatest pro players of all time rain here playing on his main account mini maxi it is an s ranked account 2544 i really don't know how these two accounts matched up but this is indeed ride sky down here and they somehow matched six times in September. I believe it was the 28th or 29th of September. So not very long ago, just about a week and a bit uh, ago before uh, I'm recording this video. And we're going for a Nexus first here as rain as you do. On the ladder, very strong build. Pantheon is the map, by the way. And double gateway follow-up, which is a lot more robust. And more difficult to punish uh, for a Terran player. Hard to get in there and actually do anything about this. But he's actually going to try to do the uh, flash implementation of the Nexus bust, which is to slowly creep forward bunkers from a long distance and he's gonna get this bunker done that means that the probes can't really fight they are gonna run by this is funny very funny indeed because this is this is starting to look like a, a zvt match honestly look at the probes running by and chasing down the scvs is this not zvt to you one probe goes down but both the marines die. Damn, probes are just so much better than drones, man. <laughs> they are just so much better. It's kind of crazy. More SCVs are going to be pulled. He should start another bunker in range of the Nexus. It's going to have to go, like, right there. Uh, two zealots are going to come out and start hitting this bunker. Um, we don't have anything repairing that. He's finally going to repair it. Vulture comes forward. SCVs are going to make their way up here. Can he actually get the repair? The repair is good. Not a great idea to start fighting with the bunker there. The Zealots losing a lot of their HP. And the Vulture can come forward and just finish them off. Now he starts to leapfrog. Here we go. This is going to start to get kind of crazy. There's that Vulture going down. Two Dragoons are out though now. Can he actually get in this bunker or will he be stopped? One Marine remains. It's about to get in. Can he get in? No! It dies before getting in, but the Vulture slips by. The second Vulture is going to get into this main base, start to kill off some probes. Meanwhile, the single Marine in that bunker hitting the Nexus do not have range on the way. And so it's going to be hard to clear this bunker. SCVs. Uh, probably just get pulled away at this point. There's no real point, no, no real reason to keep them here, uh, except for repairing. I'm gonna jump right on top of that bunker. Starts to target down some SCVs. There's just not enough in the bunker to be a real threat. Eventually, that dragon is gonna die. There we go. That goes down. Targeting down the bunker. Can he actually get it? Oh, he just barely gets it there. 
That is kind of crazy. Killing the bunker with no range is a pretty risky move. And now the Marines, since the Dragoons have been harmed, they've been damaged so much, they can start to push these back and maybe even get a kill on one of these. This has got one HP. Oh man. Wouldn't, I think we should have started another bunker actually. <laughs> this is not gonna get too much damage. He goes for that last Dragoon, he's almost got it. Killing off some probes, another probe goes down. As the dust settles on this rush, where are we exactly? Still no range here for rain. 11 probes to 20 SCVs. That is a bit damning. Of course, we do have double Nexus production, which makes a pretty big difference. This single Marine in the bunker, not gonna last too long, but it does deal enough to shave off the shields of that one Dragoon at least. Tank comes up. This tank is gonna be able to push things back pretty heavily. Uh, SCV's coming out. No, the SCVs are blocking. Oh my God, the SCVs blocked there. And so the tank will go down. Vulture trying to run by, throwing down some mines on this ramp. Can we see some missed shots on some of these mines? No, the missed shots are not enough. And the dragoons will survive. These SCVs are going to fall. Good micro here from Rain. Pretty chaotic and intense early game between Ride Sky and Rain. We should see a CC get set up here pretty soon though because he's gonna start to fall behind in worker count uh, in just a moment if he doesn't get that down and saturated here soon. Starport, wait, what? We're just going full one base? Oh, this is insane. This is intense, guys. We're gonna have a drop come in. The drop of Vulture is gonna come into the main. And are we going to have any tanks to push the front while this is going on? Because if he gets an observer out, he doesn't have one going yet, but there's the robotics facility started. If he gets an observer out on the map, you can just walk across and kill him with these dragoons because mines are just not going to do anything. So tank gets started. You will have one. Where are the vultures? Four vultures on the map. We have the control tower coming. The follow-up drop is pretty insane. Oh, he's just gonna run by. Wow, he manages to slip in here. And there, again, no observer. Just going to let one dragoon die. Taking the hit there so that the uh, rest of the dragoons can get in here and stop this damage because it is getting intense. That was so many kills. Hardly any probes left here in the main. Once again, way behind in workers. 21 to 29 is brutal. But he's got way more patches to mine from, and his income will be better. Just need to keep defending and prevent any more damage from happening, and he will eventually pull ahead. Now, there is a CC here in the natural. I was wondering when this was going to be. Uh, happening and a CC at six o'clock as well. Ride Sky is so dirty. It is just, just pure filth coming out of this man. Two vultures going to be dropped into the main base, but there's three dragons over here. He knows it's a possibility. Kind of surprised to see him have these in the main already, but I think it's a good idea. You can see he sent back the dragons with the lowest HP. Keeping them in the main base is a great plan because the vultures are not going to be after the dragoons. And they wouldn't be able to kill the dragoons anyway. He manages to prevent most of the damage. And these dragoons, having them in the main makes sense because they're not going to be killed here. They can still defend just like any other dragoon, but they won't be suddenly sniped by a tank. Hanging out in the main base. Now he is going to push forward with these dragoons. He's got an observer in front of the army. We don't have siege mode just yet. Okay, just finished. This is a really big moment. He's got to have these sieged up before the attack comes. Siege. Okay, he does get sieged, but it's a little bit late here and can close the distance. Rain going to get on top of all of this. Hitting a lot of these tanks and has four Dragoons on that one tank. He's able to pick it off. The SCV blocking is pretty good, especially right now. He's really doing a good job of keeping 
the dragoons back they're not able to get those connections some marines pop out no bunker here though so they will just be picked off another dragoon does fall good surround on this last dragoon and he will defend still has an scv advantage but lost quite a few tanks in that defense unfortunately drop is coming back in but it is completely empty nothing in that drop ship just a bit of a feint here and a opportunity to scout as well he just saw the robo and the robotic support bay which is some great information his mining is going on here at the six o'clock now such a sneaky sneaky play from our Terran ride sky is really down and dirty filth he's in the muck right now in the way he's combating rain rain with just two gateways is gonna take a third but he has no idea that his third is light years behind the third of his opponent and how would he know how would he really know because things have been so chaotic and crazy these are the games where you can really easily get away with a hidden base games like this where both players are kind of in the dark as to where they're at uh, against each other right usually when you're playing a game and everything's going kind of standard uh, for the most part you can sort of figure out where you're at in relationship to your opponent you know kind of what they should have what they can have and when you notice that things are not quite where they should be you can sort of intuit that there must be a extra base on the map but with the chaos that's gone on so much damage so much craziness that's happened in this game there's really no way for rain to understand and just intuit that there may be a hidden base out on the map and you can see he has no idea he has no idea he doesn't even suspect he's not checking the map he's not flying an observer around he's got one observer in the main he sees five factory there's another drop into this main looks like those two vultures shut down immediately here maybe even getting no probe kills but there's a massive advantage right now for Riot Sky is going to run into this natural, see how many probes he can get. Should be able to get at least two. Uh, maybe a bit more. Oh, he missed the probe on the gas. Wow. That probe sneaking into that gas. You can see both of these took one shot from a vulture, but managed to survive. And I think Riot Sky is in an easy winning position at this point. If he doesn't mess up his big attack, it's going to be coming in soon. He should be able to win this no problem. He's got his plus one finished. He has his science facility done. He's going to get, be getting plus two and plus one armor here in a moment. He has another CC coming up. Rain is probably going to battle him for this CC, not knowing that it's his fourth CC. He's going to be thinking, oh, it's time for you to be taking your third base. It's a little bit late, but there's been so much chaos that it's not, it's not really that late. It's not that crazy, the timing we're seeing here out of Ride Sky. Sees the dropship moving around the top side of the map. Gonna keep the pressure on, keep Rain back at home. Worrying about damage that's going in on his bases rather than worrying about the possibility of hidden bases out on the map. It's really a good idea here for Ride Sky. He's pushing out on the map. That dropship is just kind of hidden over here. Could come in at any time forcing rain into a bit more of a defensive spot and now the tanks are shoving forward is getting aggressive here with the five factory play it's not meant to kill i don't think usually if you're if he was really planning to try and win right now i think he would go to 10 fact uh because he's on three bases and he's about to be on four you can definitely afford to spend all that but he's got an observer in his base so I'm not sure if he's fully aware of that observer. He, If he was, I think he'd build a Goliath and just kill that. Um, because you don't want to reveal how many factories you've got. That could also be a tell, right? If he's sitting here on two bases and he builds 10 factories, like where, where are you getting the money for all that? Uh, you're not even going to be able to produce off of that much. So 
Now that might actually be tipping the hand to rain and at this point tipping the hand to rain is actually not a big deal now that we're this far in uh to the game if rain finds this this extra base it's honestly it's fine it's fine at this point we've already gotten the benefit out of this base we've already mined a huge amount of minerals off of this and we're going to continue to mine a lot there we have a huge army now if rain finds out about that base we could probably just defend it it's no longer necessary that that be hidden so more and more factories are going to come up here one two three four five six seven eight eight factories is not quite enough we actually need about two more go right up to ten and i think we'll have that here pretty soon yeah there we go oh no supply depot thought that was going to be more factories the psionic storm is coming up comes an engagement from rain dropping those reavers here in the back line gonna take some shots not the greatest shots in the world here just yet he's walking forward but good target firing there from ride sky killing off those uh, reavers and actually killing a lot of these dragons as well a great spread of tanks that rain just tried to engage into and he's probably wondering how do you have so much you've got so much stuff right now that is a huge amount of tanks you're getting uh double upgrades and everything this is this is a, a little bit too much i don't know how this is happening and i mean it's too late it's too late for him to intuit that and and figure out what's going on here gotta move that scv it's kind of blocking everything up in this natural here we go some storm's gonna come out on these SCVs. So many SCVs gonna go down. That's a big wad of kills. There's six kills on one of those Templars. I didn't get a click on that other Templar. A lot of kills though. Total 70 SCVs though still remain. And meanwhile, Unsiege and moving forward, catching Rain a little bit by surprise there with that move out. And now gonna take some pretty critical ground here at the front. He can target down the shuttle. He doesn't. The shuttle is there. Where are all the vultures? Wait, we're missing a lot of vultures in this fight. There's so many tanks at the front line, but we need vultures to kind of soak and kill these uh, zealots at the front. Looks like he's going to still take a pretty reasonable fight, clearing out a lot of these dragons, but he did lose quite a few tanks. The lack of vultures here are really harming this push. Only if four tanks remain. Still, more will be rallied forward. He's only got still two machine shops. I'm a little bit worried about that. Why do we only have two machine shops when we've got three gases? That seems a little bit weird to me. He could afford to produce a lot more tanks and have a way bigger army. He's going to be focusing down one of those shuttles, but the other shuttle allowed to drop everything out on top of this army. So many Goliaths uh, have been produced by ride sky it's uh, a little bit confusing i'm not sure why he's going for so many goliaths and then not focusing down the shuttles there's a great storm holy that storm killing a lot three mech units at least got picked off by that another two three mech units get picked off as well there's that drop finally coming in it's made its way into the top corner nice kill with the probe finishing that off still shoving in right now but this is a flimsy army that Ride Sky has brought to the front. Only one tank. There's one more back here. Two more coming up. But eventually, this should get overwhelmed by uh, all the gateway units popping out here for rain. He will eventually get enough zealots and dragoons together to break through this position. There's all the vultures finally making their way to the front. He's going to come up to this high ground, utilizing that. Uh, Science Vessel to face tank the uh, Photon Cannon shots. Not exactly how you want to do it, but at least getting the vision there on that high ground. Bring up some more tanks now. We have to fight back against this Reaver. The Reaver going to look for some more damage here. Might be able to get a good shot on one of these tanks. He does. The Reaver will go down here pretty soon. Got to target some of these shuttles. The shuttles are the key unit. Losing all of his Goliaths once again. And you can just see how much of a struggle it is for a Terran player to, uh, of Ride Sky's caliber to close out a game against a Protoss uh, of Rain's position. It is so tough. You can see he's just kind of getting pulled apart here at the front line. He's going to lose all of these tanks, it looks like. 
Good positioning here with the Reaver right in the middle of all this. It does go down, though. Reaver does end up falling. One of these tanks down here was able to reach. Oh, that mine! Four Dragoons suddenly explode, and now there's almost nothing left on the ground. I think he will lose this Nexus. Oh, this one Vulture over here with four kills. So annoying. It's forcing Rain to continuously pull his probes down. He's actually out of money in his main and natural. Oh my goodness. Ride Sky has done it. He's been so scrappy. He's been battling so hard with Rain this entire game. He's managed to get up a base in bottom left as well. He's drained Rain of all of his money, even though he's taken pretty good fights. He's had uh, good success in dealing with a lot of these tanks and getting rid of a lot of these tanks. He doesn't even know that there's a base down in the bottom left. He sees the mineral fields now. How? What? What? 300 minerals? That's all that's left on this mineral field? You, you've had this for that long? Rain disgusted by Red Sky at the moment. Does get a huge amount of kills on this mineral line. So many SCVs just went down, but I'm sure that he is just absolutely losing his motivation to play this game at this point. He's probably just spit on the ground knowing that his opponent has had that additional base for this long. That hidden base down at bottom center has absolutely changed this game in Ride Sky's favor. And the chances here for Rain to come back are very few, but he's going to have to bank it on a big attack like this. Can he get on top of all of these forces and pick them off? He's killing a lot of tanks here, trading out his Dragoons for a huge amount of Terran mech. Plus three, plus two is done though. And they will take the day. You need He needed to clear this army and still have a lot left over because the amount of rallies that are coming out here for Ride Sky, it, there's just no way to, to win unless you can completely out-trade the Terran player at this point. And it's such a tall order against 3-2 mech. The Storms are going to help. The Reavers are going to help. This Archon even doing a good job here at the front. You can see he's doing an excellent job fighting with the bare minimum number of units, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. There's the Reavers getting even more kills in this fight. There is that Dematrix uh, tank there in the front. GG is finally called as the rallies make their way forward. Yeah, look at how much stuff is coming out every few seconds from Ride Sky. He's just pumping out masses and masses of mech units to that front line. And Rain is barely able to produce anything. Just three Dragoons in production. That's not going to be enough. It's a numbers game at this point. And so Ride Sky wins game number one. Mini, he's going to be watching back that replay and just seething, knowing that he completely missed uh, that six o'clock expansion. Let's see if he can change things up and start to put the pressure back on these Terrans who have been pulling him apart with so much aggression. Let's jump into game number two. All right, guys, we're hopping into game number two. We're sipping. We've got some Umeshu here, some plum wine. We're just going to be chilling going through this series. Last game was pretty insane. Ride Sky got away with a lot after putting on a huge amount of pressure. It's kind of rare to see a Terran player try to bust the Nexus first, fail to kill the Nexus, and then go directly into drop and make it work. I mean, the drop play right after was a gambit uh, that Rain was quite well aware of, but still managed to do a little damage. And then the hidden base was like a secondary gimmick that ended up pulling him into a very good position and now rain i mean he's pissed you can tell he's over here harassing we're on dominator he's managed to scout first and so he is putting on a lot of pressure here by stealing this gas and sending a zealot let's see what ride sky can do against this he's got pretty much the perfect setup to defend this initial zealot there's not much of a better setup that you could ask for than what we see here at the front. 
this is a gap right here this is a gap right here if you want to walk around and attack the marine on the other side you have to walk all the way around that cc and the barracks it's just a very tough position to get into and i doubt this l will do much let's see what rain can make happen can he get maybe the scv building the command center is he gonna run right in here try to get inside that main he gets one scv pretty good control uh, from ride sky as well almost blocking that scv or almost blocking with the scv but unfortunately ends up losing one pull that one back another marine about to pop out second zealot has made it to the front here three marines in the main are gonna eventually clear this out but the zealot over here at the natural could deal some damage he gets on top of that marine he's gonna go after the scv now he should be able to get it he does get that but the command center is just about done and it looks like with the transfer he should be okay yeah stabilizing pretty well here Ooh, he's not really paying attention he's gonna lose one of these marines second marine about to go down great pulling away there by red sky should get this kill there it is only losing two marines not bad at all but a bit of damage on this one marine though and he's gonna start mining gas at the natural immediately upon that cc finishing so he will get his factory up in just a moment can there be any more pressure coming out from rain well he didn't go for range and he's gone directly into a robo after his nexus so i don't know i think this is a pretty good spot for our terran player he's already got mining at the natural we just started mining here rain just a moment ago in his own natural so his nexus was a little bit behind and there it is double factory in the main there's a little bit of time here where maybe rain could come across and deal some damage but he doesn't have range and so he really won't be able to do much it's like we're gonna jump inside there we go keeps those two marines alive and the assimilator in the main base is about to go down it has quite a bit of vision so you do really want to get rid of that quickly look at how much vision there is around this uh assimilator assimilators have more vision than refineries or extractors which is uh just typical zealot here posted up out in the front there will be a vulture out soon we may need to bail out of this position but looks like we're gonna have a third base coming down pretty quickly here from rain he's taking a bit of a risk by not adding on any more gateways he has the robotic support base so he will have a reaver soon but he's got two goons maybe a third okay three goons one gateway and one reaver and he's gonna take a third base it's a little bit risky and it might get punished here four factories are coming online very quick four factory from ride sky he's gonna pull a trigger on a really quick attack i think when vulture heading out on the map doesn't have any upgrades at all so it's just going to head across see what it can scout maybe head up to the top right try to put down a mine here or something we don't have mines yet in fact speed just started there's mines on the way as well double factory tank some vultures being made as well i still don't see range do we have range did i miss that upgrade coming online i don't think that i did but it feels really late now it's gonna go into four gate after this four gate plus a reaver it's coming over here towards this front gonna land try to get a shot on these tanks not able to get that shot on the tank which is kind of big in between the shots of the reaver he can come forward and try to hit the reaver does a little damage to it takes away the shields but the tanks are getting low diving forward here on top nice shot with the reaver there dealing so much damage to this tank and killing off some SUVs as well does need to back away though as it takes a little bit more damage here he's found a spot a position that can be breached no turrets are able to hit him 
as he moves here into the main base despite this being such a low hp uh shuttle he manages to get into the back line here and could get a huge amount of damage oh this get a dud 21 hp on that shuttle if he puts one more turret back here yeah he will he can't really get out this turret is gonna hit he might be able to drop before the shuttle dies but can't really get out of this position what do we have back here an armory is finally going to start but four factory production is well underway and yeah it does look like range is finished um uh, maybe not uh it's hard to tell it really is difficult to tell it's not like goliath range where the color of the missiles changes here it's just the plasma cannon or the Photon cannon, I guess phase disruptor is a really weird name for an attack, but there it is. It's gonna disrupt him from the physical phase into the vapor phase. But these tanks continue to push forward and he's right up here in the natural. This is looking like a Terran victory, honestly, right now. This is a really tough position to get out of. He's taken a lot of damage on this Reaver. We do have another shuttle coming up here, so he will be able to drop on top of this most likely. The missile turret died, so it's not like he can do anything against the, the shuttle right now. Oh, the Reaver dies instantly. Rain is just about out of this one, guys. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Ride Sky is dominating him in this series so far. Rain getting pushed all the way back into this corner, and GG is called. He just can't do anything. A very smart play honestly from ride sky the way that he mapped this out very impressed with him i mean the wall was really nice the zealot da like the zealots hardly did any damage at all he was able to out micro those zealots quite easily and then the very quick follow-up four factory push this is not typical it's usually five or six factory but he knew that there was going to be a point of vulnerability for Rain where he was taking a very quick base and he was trying to uh, make up for some lost time and just runs him over. Let me go back and just see when exactly did range start because I'm, I'm actually curious about that. I really didn't see it before. Uh, the robo so okay there it is so he did start and finish range it was just during some other action i think or maybe i just straight up missed it we'll blame it on the umeshu we'll blame it on the alcohol it is what it is he did get that range and he had the three gateways he had the reaver but it just wasn't good enough it wasn't good enough to deal with this four factory play from ride sky very well handled by him i'm really impressed with this play and i'm honestly a little bit worried for rain in his upcoming series i hope that he can put out some better games than this hope that he's refined his play we can see something really strong out of him in the ssl but we're not going to pass judgment on him just yet we've still got four more games to get into so let's jump in to that next one well, you can tell that Rain is pissed at this point, and how you can tell is this right here on the map. This is how Rain will choose to play from behind, so remember that when he gets into a 5 or a 7 game series. If he starts losing to a Terran player, this may be his fallback. Single gateway in front of the natural proxy. Gonna try to put on some huge pressure to ride Sky in this early game. See if he can take back the initi initiative, seize back the momentum that's been lost so far after these two uh, L's that he's taken. Gonna go ahead and throw down a pylon. Is this actually blocking? It doesn't look like it blocks the SCV here, but maybe it does. I thought it would have to be, you know, one hex higher to block the entrance to this one, but maybe I'm wrong. If it's actually blocking, that's a pretty decent proxy pylon. And it, he's just attacking it, so I guess it does block. Two SCVs are going to be 
allocated to that now. He's getting gas, but he's only mining it with one SCV, which would likely be a mistake. There we go. Another SCV going to come out and start to mine that. You see, he's the one gateway. I think he just saw that with the SCV. And so he's going to go ahead and scout the main, I guess. Did he miss that? Supply Depot coming up here. Pretty interesting little position we've got for ourselves. Oh, that Vault or that uh, Zealot really glitching out a lot. Oh, and the SCV survives. That's so big. Hasn't lost a single SCV so far, and he's done so much damage to the Zealot. The Zealot is very badly injured right now. Another Marine is going to pop out here soon. There's the factory at the front. He's probably just going to try and run forward, kill this SCV, and delay the factory as long as he can. That's going to be the main target. Oh, get in there. Ah, oh, he can't get... <laughs> okay, that that uh, Zealot can actually slip by. I didn't know that the Zealot can, can slide through here, but I guess I did know that. Uh, Supply Depot on the right-hand side is uh, Zealot type, but below the barracks is definitely not Zealot type. So it's not the greatest SimCity in the world here. Ride Sky, but it's been doing him pretty well. He's lost what one SCV and one Marine so far. Not the worst thing in the world. He's got three uh, finished up now. This one SCV needs to get over. Oh, it's so close. Does survive though. We'll get back on that supply depot and finish it up. Another Zealot went down. Oh man, does pick that off and gets that. Uh, probe as well a little bit of delaying action has happened to this factory but so far ride sky proving to be extremely formidable uh and robust when it comes to dealing with these early game zealot shenanigans and this has not done the damage that rain was hoping for this is i mean if he gets in here and kills all these zealots maybe it'll be worth it but at this point right now okay there's the range just want to mention that before i go ahead and say that he didn't get it Right now, as it stands, this is not enough damage. We're here with the Dragoon at the front. It's going to be rallying those Dragoons forward. Second gateway finishes up here in the main. Maybe looking to take a natural here soon. But we've already got factory finished. And a CC should be coming up on high ground in just a moment. All he needs to do is wait for siege mode. Get a tank on the high ground, get his nexus, and he'll eventually be able to push out and deal with this gateway. Which, losing the gateway, it hurts. It hurts as the Protoss player. Gateway plus pylon, it's quite a painful loss. And I don't think he's made up for it with the amount of damage that he's done. You can see the workers on par with the Terran. Second tank is about to pop three goons here at the front. Three goons, not the greatest at killing tanks, but with just only four marines at the front. Not enough DPS to force the goons back. And so he'll have to stay up here on the high ground. If he gets a big siege and kills a dragoon right now, yeah, he's going to target that one in the middle. Let's so get another shot. Just barely not. We'll have the uh, barracks come down. Command center will be floating here in a bit. And there's the Nexus. It just started. So Nexus just started. Command Center is over halfway done. Once again, Rain in a bad position early game. Will he be able to bring it back uh, against Ride Sky here, who's been making the best decisions possible, it seems, throughout this series. Each game so far, he's just been one step ahead. Is basically figuring out where rain wants to take these games and he's finding the best approach to dealing with the strategies here from rain we're gonna have a command center landing finally and this should be an armory there it is armory comsat everything's coming up looking good here comes the scan in the main base. We're going to see that in a moment here. 
Actually, maybe he holds back on the scan, considering he's only got one, just in case there was a DT follow-up or something like that. You can pretty much tell this is not a DT follow-up if you can spot these goons. The number of goons. We should be able to tell. Okay, you're not... You don't actually have the gas for all of that, so... That's definitely not what's coming, but it's a good prudent maneuver if you haven't seen the goon count to hold on to these scans and make sure that you have at least a couple of scans banked before uh, throwing one out in the main base and figuring out exactly what's going on. There is that scan as the first one finishes up, or the second comsat finishes up, the first scan is going to come out in that main. He sees the observatory. He sees two gateways, a third nexus on the way here for rain. Two tanks on the high ground. Another scan. Let's see what he's looking for. He sees the third. Very nice scan there, seeing that third base timing. Are we going to see another four fact? No, an immediate command center command center comes out maybe it was actually started before the scan for the third another scan goes down main base once again two gateways is all there is a hidden robotic support bay time to start to push out there's almost nothing for rain aside from these gateway units what you see is what you get total of 11 gateway units is all there is I'm surprised to see a couple of Goliaths. And to leave these tanks on the high ground is a little bit weird to me. I think you want to bring all of this together. These tanks up here on the high ground are not going to be doing a whole ton of damage. I guess the Dragoons, as long as they're in range on the top side, uh, it's kind of worth it to have those up there. Oh my god, absolutely wrecked. Uh, if you re recognize that there's two tanks up here, all you need to do is not allow those tanks to engage and you should win the fight that's like half the dps of this army nearly half um but he takes a terrible fight there loses everything and now rain's gonna lose his gateway wow <laughs> this is kind of shocking actually this is uh immersion breaking or uh something of the sort i I don't know exactly what to call it, but this is not what I was expecting for Ride Sky to be dominating this hard. He's playing everything out so smart. Uh, the the four Goliaths, I mean, they're great if there was a Reaver out on the field already, but I mean, now he doesn't need to build those four Goliaths. He can just rally with Vultures and Tanks. And those four Goliaths, if they fire and shoot down a... A shuttle as it comes out there's only like one reaver on the field he's already targeting it puts a bunch of damage on that shuttle Needs like one to two more volleys with all three of these goliaths and he will just kill that he's gonna dive on it great shots here he kills that big big kill on that shuttle and there's only a reaver popping out that means the shuttle is gonna take a long time to get to the front this gives plenty of leeway for ride sky to push in towards this natural with no fear of a reaver shuttle just the sol solitary reaver here at the front slugging it out there should be another one slugging its way forward as well there's the uh, shuttle in production good number of gateways here but is it good enough to stop this attack he's desperately throwing down more and more gateways in the vulture run by on this side could be pretty devastating i'm very glad to see that rain has the pylon wall finished over at this base otherwise he would be getting ransacked similar to earlier games against ride sky and or was that uh speed excuse me i think that was actually against speed that he was pulled apart on this map but i'm glad to see him uh covering this base properly it's just the army that's moving in towards this natural is starting to look quite scary. We're waiting on Zealot Speed now. Hoping that that upgrade will come online here sooner rather than later. Coming in between the rally point. I love this from Rain. Gonna get a tank for free. 2 HP on that. Oof. Oof. That 2 HP tank. Oh, he can't get the shot. That's so rough. 
Vultures here. Have a peace agreement with this probe. The peace has been broken. Eight kills on this reaver. Wow. So many kills for that one reaver. Picking off mines, picking off vultures and goliaths as they were pushing forward earlier. Now going to be loaded back up into that shuttle and looking for a way to break this attack. All he needs is to wait for this next round. Eight more zealots and leg enhancements. That is a great timing to try and break this uh, position. It's tough to get on top of this. Uh, with the positioning here, the fact that he's like uh, wrapped around this bridge, he's actually going to back up. Pretty smart stuff, realizing that the zealots are going to be coming here soon. However, these tanks are so stacked and the reavers dropped in the middle. None of them can be hit by these tanks. Oh my God, this is such good control by uh, Rain and pretty bad placement overall from Ride Sky. What was he thinking? Putting all of those tanks right next to each other? Why not pull them back and, you know, bring them down to the corner here, like somewhere where they can... Uh, be spread out and cover that bridge even pull them way back here but pulling them back on top of these other tanks and sieging that seemed like a, a bit of a a poor maneuver from him however his position is still looking fantastic he's got three bases up he's been on three bases as long as rain has been on three bases and he is Heading around the bottom side of the map now. Two HP tank. Sitting here over by the mineral line. Pretty hilarious. That was never picked off. I don't know what it can add to the army. I would say probably unseage that and send it back home so it can be repaired. But I guess he's just going to leave it there for now. Yeah, you can just drop right on top of that. Yeah, easy kill. 15 minerals. Just traded it up for a tank. Oh, a drop inside the main. I love it. 12 kill tank. Wait a second. Oh my goodness. This tank has so many kills. Is that all from probes? I don't... I doubt it. I doubt that's all from probes. It must be a tank that was doing work earlier on in the game, but it's killing quite a lot. The vultures here setting up mines, just dealing more damage here in the main base, slowing things down from rain and Although it will be cleaned up eventually, it forced the pull and killed a lot of workers. So he is absolutely uh, ecstatic about the way that that performed, I am sure. Drop coming in towards this natural, but it gets completely denied. 46 probes to 72. Oh my god. Once again, Ride Sky in a dominant position. Gonna come forward. But the two Goliaths there denying this shuttle from uh, really doing its work. Slowing down and killing off some of these tanks that are coming out to take the fourth base. Counter attack coming across the map. He wants to maybe hit this location. It's a lot easier to harass. Especially as Protoss. Storms and Reavers are going to be very good at dealing damage to those exposed SCVs. However, the Reaver goes down immediately and the shuttle falls. Oh gosh, I think Rain might be baited into taking this fight after losing all of that stuff. He is in a desperate position. He just GG's out. Yeah, he was not feeling it there and I cannot blame him. He was in a very rough position. And coming across that bridge, getting the Reaver shuttle sniped immediately. Oof. There's not much left to do in this game aside from tap out. And he does do just that. Incredible plays here from Ride Sky so far. He's proving to be quite the contender when it comes to Terran versus Protoss. He's got some brains in him, man. That's what I'm saying. So many factors came up. Uh, with this play. I, I felt like he was lacking a little bit in some of the previous games in terms of factory count, but it looks like he got four, five, six, seven, eight, eight factories. I mean, he could still go for 10. We're on we're on four bases after all. Uh, 10 factories is not un, uh, impossible. It's not, um, not crazy, that's for sure. But he had the good, uh, the upgrades coming, plus two, plus two was just about to finish. 
You've done so much damage to Rain. He slowed him down so much. Very aggressive style. Very cool Terran player to watch, guys. I'm really enjoying this series so far. I hope you are too. Let's jump into our next game. So, well, playing normal didn't work for Rain and putting a gateway on his opponent's side of the map also didn't go well. What's the next play that Rain can make? Try to put on more pressure to ride Sky or is he just going to switch it up completely? Hmm. Dominator is our map and so far Ride Sky has been playing out of his mind. We'll see if he wants to gasless fast expand once again. I don't see a probe heading out on the map here just yet for rain. So he's not looking for that uh, two or, or one of two 50% chance of stealing the gas that a lot of Protoss players go for on this map. And indeed, Rain went for earlier on in this series. 50-50. Uh, Usually, you'll probably send the probe down here because the gas is actually above. All right, like you guys can't really see what I'm talking about, but let's take a look at the map. The, the gas is above here. Uh, the mineral patches and close to the ramp. So if you send a probe immediately out of your base, you're going to send it to this space because the probe can come down and before the Terran player can react, you can usually steal that gas. But on this side, you come in, you got to run past the CC. You can skirt along the edge here and sometimes they won't see you and you can come and steal the gas, but that's a little bit risky. It's a little bit tough probably isn't going to end up working out and so mostly we see pro players or protoss players sending their uh, probe down to that bottom left that's the easiest gas to steal is what i'm trying to say anyway nothing of that sort here for rain rather than sending any zealots across the map he's just going to go directly into a goon and i like that i think with how the zealots have been defended thus far which is quite good He's been defending very, very well against the Zealot pressure. Probably not a good idea to continue with that type of play. Trying to get more damage here when it just doesn't seem to be sticking against Ride Sky. So Ride Sky gonna bail out of here with his SCV. Go hide that on the map somewhere and send it back in a little bit later. Meanwhile, Rain is going to drop a Nexus in the natural and should be starting his range here in a moment. And there it is. Range on the way. Goon's going to be pumped out here as he has the money for it. Going to start his second goon. Going to keep that first goon here on the high ground. Just waiting for any sort of aggression coming from Ride Sky. But it's not going to be anything too crazy. Oh, just about to say it. But there it is. A starport is on the way scv that was hidden on the map is gonna run by here and actually gets into the main gonna see everything very good scout for ride sky he knows that this cyber Knight score is spinning of course you can right as the scv is coming in start a uh, air attack upgrade and then cancel it after the scv is gone but so you'd much rather see this other pylon and make sure that there's no building over here in the top corner. But he's pretty sure that there's nothing over there. You can't 100% confirm, but you should be mostly sure that he's not going to have just one super fast robo. Instead, just goons being pushed out one by one a second gateway is about to start I'm just going to keep constant production on those and the drop ship is on the way so we're going to have ride sky put some pressure out here in the front make sure that every goon is pulled out here uh, onto this pizza slice and then we're going to have that drop come into the main base and we'll see how much damage that drop can actually do mines are going to be laid here in the front very important that he doesn't actually lose these vultures, though. He really needs to pull that one back. Okay, almost loses that. Going after some of these probes. He's got good position on these mines. Trying 
to bait a mine out here so that he can target it down. Oh, he goes up to the tank. Four dragoons get two shots on those tank and actually those tanks and actually kill it off. So this has gone a little bit wrong so far for Ride Sky. He shouldn't have sent the, the tank so far forward. We'll go ahead and bait that one more mine. Does lose a goon for it though. It's a very hard skill to develop. Very difficult trick to pull off. Drop into the main. Here we go. Dropping these mines right next to the gateways is dirty. It is deadly. It's going to force these dragoons to run around. Try to run through the mineral line. He actually gets through the mineral line, which is not easy to do. But take some damage from that mine. Another mine goes off. Oof. That is brutal. Another Dragoon going down. So this drop play working out pretty well for Ride Sky. And we're going to have a Reaver out soon. But another drop is going to come into this main. He's got mines on these ones so he can lay down more mines. We still don't have that observatory yet. And this is very much hurting Rain. Oh, great shot from that Reaver getting two kills immediately. A very nice uh, placement on that gateway to make sure. Ouch. Losing another dragon. Yeah, putting that gateway right in the wall as all this pressure is coming. Smart play. Very smart play from Rain. He doesn't need these goons over here anymore. Another vulture coming into this main. As soon as it gets in range of that Reaver, though, it's just going to die. Reaver is a great tool for vulture defense. So hard to get any damage when a Reaver is just sitting there. Uh, the moment that the vultures fly in to start hitting those probes, the one-shot potential of the Reaver is just too good. It absolutely dominates that. Wraith, though, came out. I think that it's pretty smart for Rain to not push with this Reaver and try to go across some map and deal damage. Since he saw the dropship, he should realize, well, there is a starport out, so the next logical thing to do is to build a Wraith drop is still out on the map and still being a little bit threatening although there's not that many vultures out here we also don't have any turrets so there it, you know could deal damage like we could pick up a, a dragoon and a reaver and come in keep, use the dragoon to push away the wraith and try to deal damage with the reaver but he's not opting to do that instead keeping this reaver in a defensive posture Waiting for the next drop to come in, and actually it will. It will come in, and it will be shut down. Nice pick up there. Just getting out of this uh, main base. Keeps the dropship alive and the two vultures alive, so... A worthwhile play here for Ride Sky. Just spotting that reaver and knowing where it is, is value in and of itself. Right now, the... Oh, another run by here. Uh, drop and then run into the natural doesn't get any probes though 44 to 40 a sizable lead for ride sky in terms of the those workers but a third base has started and what will be the follow-up just three factories so far the wraith is here searching for that all-important shuttle but meanwhile, an observer flying around in the main base. If he knew about that, it would be good to get rid of it. He doesn't have an academy yet. And so he can't deal with the observer at all. No way to get rid of that, aside from building a turret in the main. To build a turret right here might push that away, but... It's now over here in the natural... Seeing everything that it needs to see... And vultures are out on the map. Oh, the probe transfer. Oh, that probe transfer is so juicy. It's not going to find it, though. Instead, picking up. I heard a pickup. I guess it's the Reaver. I'm going to pick up and drop into the main once again. There is a bit of a gap here where he could slip by. He's actually going to drop over here and maybe throw down some mines once, once more. Just running over to the back of this uh, main base. Get a couple of probes. Not bad at all. Three probes, four probes, and a fifth, potentially? No, four probes is good, though. Very good amount of damage here for just those two vultures that have already used their mines. 
Wraith is coming up to scout. I'd like to see him just keep this back at home though. We don't have a lot of turrets and that Reaver is still a pretty sizable threat. Two shuttles are heading out on the map and I know what this is for. It's likely going to be an aggressive drop into the main base to disrupt Ride Sky. Mines are placed everywhere. There are a few turrets here and there as well. Fourth base is going to start. Oh, another drop into the main. Wow. Still dealing damage in this main. Keeping those probe numbers down. Here comes that drop. Gonna fly right in on top of this mineral line. How much damage can this do? A big shot there on one of the tanks. We get a few SCVs now. The majority of them have been pulled, but still enough here that uh, dropping this Reaver and just taking some pot shots is going to be worthwhile. The Reaver had to be left inside the base, but 13 kill total is pretty strong for that Reaver. Dropping the SCV count to equal the probe count now. So all of the damage that was done earlier on by the relentless uh, vulture attacks from Ride Sky has kind of been equalized at this point. One tank will be picked off at the front. He's pulling the SCVs out here. He wants to take this third, but is it too reckless? The way he's moving this command center, it's possible that he could lose this. Although, since it was pulled back quickly, I think it's unlikely. Yeah, he will be forced away. And so this pizza slice is finally going to be taken over. Tanks on high ground, pretty hard to push into. Even if you are a player of the caliber of Rain, unlikely that he'll be wanting to just dive in there and try to take a fight against this pretty well-placed army. Spotted the dropship with the probe over, heading to, out to take that fifth base in a moment, but since it's been spotted, Maybe he can go and snipe that probe. No, he's going to load up again. At least one vulture to go kill the probe. There it is. Good move here to get rid of that probe. Two vultures going to be unloaded into the main. Let's see what kind of damage this can do. A few more probes still in here. Potential targets for that. But in the meanwhile, a drop landing here on top of this mineral line. Got to pull the SCVs. They're going to take a lot of splash damage from the tanks. Oh, there's the Reaver as well. Could go for the SCVs here and kill a lot of them. SCVs are just going to stay and mine. Not even bothering, not even worrying about this, but the CC goes down. Uh-oh. That CC falling is quite a big swing in Rain's favor. Definitely needed to lift that off as the attack was coming in. It helps to get the SCVs out of there. And you can kind of float it over your army to... Make sure that it doesn't get picked off at the periphery, just like we saw. Zealot heading down here. That's going to be dealt with. That's only got 6 HP, so of course it'll be killed. Uh, meanwhile, the dropship is probably going to fall. And an army moving around, wrapping around the side here. Ride Sky going to cut off these dragoons, force them to run through a minefield if they want to head back uh, to the base. Unfortunately, the... Uh, Wraith was killed, but Dragoon gonna be heading onto this high ground. Ride Sky is pushing forward. Looks like he wants to push in this direction. Try to take out this third base of Rain. And with the positioning now, it's looking pretty doable. Maybe if he spreads out tanks along here as well, all along this wall. Ooh, I don't, I don't like this position at all. That's seven tanks all stacked up in one spot. All we need is a single uh, dropship, and he's got two to drop zealots on top of this. Here comes the big storm, the biggest storm you've ever seen. Seven tanks in a stack just get lit up by that storm, and that's it, man. You're not coming back from a loss like that, not after you lost your CC. And you just throw all of your tanks against the wall and everything dies. I don't care if you have 60 probes or not. Rain is going to be able to close this one out. He's going to quickly try to take a fourth base. He's going to have to hang on for dear life. Right as I say that, he taps out. 
trying to take this base right now is a Hail Mary like you've never seen before. Man, what an unfortunate position it, we just saw from Ride Sky. He's been playing such a brilliant series so far. But when I see a Terran player stack up tanks like that, I feel like... How many times has this happened to you as a Terran player? Like, you've probably been through this same exact experience, uh, you know, 9 million times on the ladder, stacking up your tanks too much and just getting annihilated by a storm. How can you possibly siege your tanks? It's not like Hydras or whatever, where you click them out on the map and they all clump up just because that's the way the AI works and then a storm hits them. He moved them to this position and then he clicked siege while they were all stacked on top of each other seven tanks sitting right on top of each other they did a good job against the dragoons but it's obvious that they're gonna get uh stormed they're going to get uh, killed by a reaver or just dropped zealots upon and that position easily easily broken here by rain and rain finally firing back in this series has he regained the momentum here? Will he be able to carry it through with more wins to his name? We're going to find out in our next game. Let's jump right in. Hey, well, that worked well for Rain. I mean, maybe going for another game like that. Just uh, one gate goon expand. Could be the right play for him. Uh, this other place certainly have been working well. But here we are once again on Dominator. What are we going to see out of Ride Sky after that loss? He managed to put three wins on the board in a row. And it got taken out by a pretty standard play overall. Is he going to get aggressive now? What will be his play? We've just got a gas and gateway coming up. Gas and barracks on the way here. And by the way, guys, I wanted to say thank you for all the nice comments you guys sent me on the last video. Really appreciate it. I was complaining about uh, receiving some annoying comments and that. Thinking about uh, discontinuing or stopping to read the comments. And so many of you guys reached out and said some nice things. So really do appreciate that. I don't have anything bad to say about uh, most of the comments that I receive, like I would say 80 to 90% are all positive and very kind, um, or just genuine concerns and comments, things that people want to see in the future or uh, they think could be worked on. And I definitely accept um, with an open heart, the uh, genuine uh, constructive criticism that you guys have for me. Um, so I'm going to try to do my best to ignore most of the comments or at least the ones that are annoying and I'll see about uh, maybe deleting the YouTube studio function from my phone or something like that. Try to limit my exposure anyway to maybe like a, a short period of time each day. So it's like a, a quick burst rather than kind of like a constant annoyance which um should should be easier i think some of you guys maybe misunderstood me that i was thinking about stopping <laughs> doing youtube because of that i would never consider stopping youtube because of a comment definitely not uh i i was more so considering just stopping reading youtube comments and, or responding to them at all uh just because of some annoying ones and just you know post and ghost rather than you know looking at comments but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. I'm thinking about it. It's in the back of my head. Anyways, guys, thank you all for uh, so many great comments on that last video. I really appreciate it. Brings my spirit up a little bit. So thank you. We have now Ride Sky with his add on. His CC has started. He's continuing to uh, mine gas. Uh, so I think we might see another drop play potentially. I didn't see if you pulled off gas for a little bit before starting the command center, but um, seems like he's got a pretty good amount of gas in the bank. Not sure if he 
uh, intends to do another drop play here or not vulture with no kills goon with just a single kill i think that was the scv that was scouting double gateway behind this robotics facility started as well Ooh, citadel didn't see that uh coming up here been mining a lot of gas have we there's the templar archives this is going to be for a dt drop and it's a, a heavy commitment going for dt and drop it really requires a lot of damage to be had what are these probes doing oh my goodness ring around the rosy here going all the way up and around and then back Sometimes the pathing is uh, a mysterious thing in Brood War, but I want to hear somebody try to explain that one. I've heard a lot of explanations about pathing, and uh, I believe it was Oxo or some. No, who was it who was doing the, the explainer videos for pathing? I'll have to look that up. Um, because I did watch a bunch of videos about Brood War Pathing and about how the actual uh, game engine works, and it was truly enlightening. A lot of interesting information with that. However, I don't think it explains at all that pathing that we just saw. That was, that was just so far out there. Let's see where we're at with, when it comes to uh, getting some detection online. We have a engineering bay that's just past that halfway point. Drop is coming out on the map. Tanks and SCVs are moving forward. Marines here in the front line. Gonna throw down a pylon to block this wall. Make sure nothing can get by there. Tanks are coming right up to the front now. He has no idea that this DT drop is gonna come in. And when he sees it, I think he might just tap out. He's got nothing in the main base for a turret. He just gonna lose this turret here in the main base. He should start one in the natural really soon. He really needs it. GG is called. Dark Templar comes out and hits this tank and that is all she wrote. Wow. A very easy victory here for uh, Rain. Just popping out a few Dark Templar, drops in the main, and then uses the one Dark Templar to stop this attack. The missile turrets were late. Definitely too late here, and we didn't have mines either. Just going for a tank, pure tank marine push. Kind of an interesting decision coming out of Ride Sky. I don't blame him for going for a play like this, so he could put on a bunch of pressure to rain uh, with the way he's been playing lately. Uh, in the past four games, you could see this doing quite a bit of damage. You could see this potentially, uh, you know, killing a whole bunch of probes or forcing a lot of respect out of rain. But against a DT play, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors. And well, he drew the short end of the stick this time. Ride Sky taps out and another win on the board for rain going into this final game. We're going to see him tie up this series. It's currently three to two. Let's go find out. Okay, time for the final game of the series. Ride Sky here in the top center. Rain in the bottom left. I guess this is the top left. I can't say this is the top center and then this is the bottom left. This one's actually farther to the... This one's farther to the left than this one. Yeah, whatever. It's Dominator. Everything's a, a weird pizza slice in this uh, map. Nothing's exactly symmetrical. Uh, things are not where they would regularly be. And so we're going to have rain here. In the bottom left-ish part of the map. I want to say this is the top part and this is the the right the right side. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Barracks in the middle of the map and a second SCV. Well, right, Sky is... Uh, Looking to end this game quickly. He is expediting the process here by throwing down double barracks. You can see that unlike Rain, who after losing three games in a row just fell back on some very 
standard play. Ride Sky here, he loses two games, he immediately pulls out the cheesiest build imaginable. And he is going to be pumping out double barracks marine in the middle of the map, trying to get a quick win. If he can get a bunker on the high ground, it makes it pretty tough. But I think you actually need to kill. You need to kill your opponent now. So just getting the bunker out might not be the ticket. Good timing there. Starting that second marine and the third will follow. The pro being here in the main is... Quite revealing, I would say. It's quite telling as to what is going on for Ride Sky. Not a lot of SCVs here at all. Nine total SCVs. He's cutting a lot. And waiting for more Marines so that he can fight up this ramp against the Zealot. He needs quite a bit of DPS to make that happen. Zealot is going to flank. And the second Zealot is going to hit from the other side. We didn't have a Nexus. We have two gates at home and a shield battery. Oof. Rain is in a very good spot. He's really handled this well. I feel like he's got the number of Ride Sky in this game. He doesn't have a gas. He's only building Zealots. And that flanking Zealot is going to be huge. Getting a kill on one of these Marines already. Second Marine goes down. There's four Zealots and only five Marines. And GG is called. Ride Sky taps out. Well played by Rain. Getting that scout and just defending this properly. I'm a little bit sad to see Ride Sky pull out a build like this to end our series. But he gave us some great games, honestly. And so I can't be too mad at the guy. Put out some excellent games. Game one through three. Uh, those games were fantastic. Game four was pretty good as well. And so finishing it off here with a bit of a crazy build. It's very unlikely that build like this will work against a strong player. You hardly ever see something like this. Uh, it still works against Zerg players, but it's just not as powerful. It's not as potent against a, a Protoss and... Unless they're going for a Nexus first. If they do Nexus first, it's a pretty easy win. It's it, it's basically rock, paper, scissors. You just get that uh, build. They do that build. You just win the game pretty well, pretty much every time. But with the way that Rain's been playing, you know, he's not really done a lot of Nexus first. So I'm a little bit surprised to see Ride Sky try this. Just hoping for an easy win. He doesn't get it. Rain ties up the series three to three. We'll have to look for that tiebreaker on the ladder sometime in the future, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed this match. Make sure to subscribe if you're looking for more StarCraft content. I am satiated. I've seen enough. I'm going to go take a rest, relax, and I'll be back tomorrow for some more Brood War. See you there.